while global business, uh, I'm sorry to say that there's not one business on the planet right now which you can truly consider as global. Uh, if you're looking at businesses as a consequence of personal ambition, well, maybe you're doing well. But if you're looking at business as a consequence of a greater vision, I don't think we're doing well. If you look back in times gone by, in 1637, the Dutch East India Company, by today's value, was worth 8.2 trillion dollars, USD. Well, today you have to put the top twenty companies to come to that number, or you have to put the economies of big nations like Germany and Japan together to get that number. So I'm saying we've not really gotten global because we are still thinking when the world is so integrated with technology, connectivity like never before, transportation like never before, reach like never before, still we are thinking of personal ambition and trying to do things in a competitive way. If we don't move from the killer instinct of competition into a fiery sense of cooperation and coordinated activity on the planet, well, we can call ourselves global businesses, but we are not because unfortunately still individual ambition is driving things. It's time to grow beyond that because there was a time your ambition and your competition, you're pitting against people that you know in your neighborhood. Now you're pitting against people, you don't know where they exist, where they are. In this condition, if you're competitive, you'll break yourself down which is happening all over the place. So, uh, global business, I hope we live up to that in the coming years. About well-being, about wealth, you're more interested in wealth or well-being? Oh, not bad <laughs> We accumulate wealth in the hope that it'll bring well-being. Hello? Yes. The purpose of wealth, of accumulating wealth is, it's a hope that well-being will come. So in this hope of trying to bring well-being to humanity, well, we're digging the planet inside out. Hello? We're digging the planet inside out, but people are not any more well than what they were hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, it's the same thing at a great cost to every other life on the planet. But human beings are not even happy, they're not even peaceful. Now it's become a big challenge even to keep your mental health. <laughs> if you're burning the planet, if you're making a bonfire of the planet, at least you must be dripping ecstasy. No such thing is happening. This is because we need to understand what we gather around us can bring comfort and convenience. What we gather around us will never ever bring well-being. Well-being can only happen in the way you are. What does way you are mean? I don't want to talk about things that which will go over your head. Let's talk something below your head. You have a body. You have a mind, I believe. Nobody's saying anything. Hello? And you have some emotion still? Yes. At least you have anger, <laughs> if not love, I'm saying <laughs> And to make all this happen, there is a life energy functioning within us always. So if your body becomes pleasant, we call this health. You want it? Okay, from now on, I ask you a question, you say yes, no, silence. For all these three things, I'm going to bless you, it's up to you. <laughs> Health, you want it? Yes. Please say one big yes to yourself, not to me, because once that is gone, the clothes that you wear, 
The car that you drive, the wealth that you have and the damn things that you're doing will not mean a damn thing. Hello? Yes or no? So I'm asking you again, health? Hundred percent yes. If your body becomes very pleasant, we call this pleasure. Yes. See, ah, you'll miss it as I'm blessing you. Pleasure. Yes. If your mind becomes pleasant, we call this peace. Yes. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it joy. If your emotions become pleasant, we call this love. This is very low, yes. Love? If it becomes very pleasant, we call it compassion. If your very life energies become pleasant, we call this bliss. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it ecstasy. What? Oh, we already got the pills. No, no, I'm not talking about that kind. Ecstasy. Yes. Essentially, what you are saying is, you want highest level of pleasantness on all levels. If your surroundings become pleasant, we call this success. To create pleasantness in your surroundings, you need the cooperation of all these people and many, many forces which work in the world. But to create pleasantness of body, pleasantness of mind, pleasantness of emotion and energy, it's one hundred percent your business. Hello? It's one hundred percent your business to create pleasantness of body, mind, emotion and energy. Creating pleasantness in the surroundings, it's a matter of skill, it's a matter of who is around us, it's a matter of the times in which we exist, many factors are there. That sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen. But this must be in the highest level of pleasantness, is that your wish? Hello? For yourself, what is the wish? Highest level of pleasantness? Those of you who are not saying anything, probably you want to go to heaven. <laughs> Let me tell you this. <laughs> what heaven means is, you don't want to go there because God is supposed to be living there. All the advertisements always said heaven is a very pleasant place. If they told you God lives there but it's a horrendous place, you want to go there? Oh, let him be, we'll pray from here only. Because the advertisements have said it's a very pleasant place, that's why you want to go there. Especially if you made a hell out of yourself, you want to go there quick. Hello? <laughs> so, well-being means anything that makes you feel well can only come from within you. Human experience comes from within you. The seat of your experience is within you, but you are not sitting there. You are in a hundred things around you. You are misunderstanding what is you and what you have gathered. Can we do a little dissection of you? Hello? Hello? Without a scalpel, I'm talking. Hello? Yes? So, uh, you understand these clothes that you wear is yours, but it's not you. No? You understand this much? The car that you drive is yours, but it's not you. The home that you have is yours, but it's not you, you get all that. But the body that you carry, you were not born like this, were you? You came like this, now you became like this. I'm not saying you're too big, I'm just saying you became like this. How? Just the food that you've eaten. Yes? Slowly you gather. This much you understand, what you gather can be yours can never ever be you, yes or no? Hello? Whatever you gather can be yours, it cannot be you. Right now suddenly I say, this vessel is my vessel. You will think Sadhguru has some problem, but uh, let's listen, everybody says he's wise. After some time I say, this is me. Then you will say, let's go. Because you know this is a case. Hello? It is a case. So you're doing this every day, food appears on your plate, you say, this is my food, you eat it and then you say, it's me. So that, I don't have so much man <laughs> Now, uh, 
what you gather, the moment you think it's you, you lost it. Once you lost that one, you will see everything that you do is just that in so many forms. So just to keep you happy, we have to turn the planet inside out and now we are planning to go to other planets and break the open and see what is there in that. If you break the whole damn universe, you will still not be happy. Because this is a case of a… can I tell you a story? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> See, when our grandmothers told stories, for every word she says, you say, ah, 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 hmm. Otherwise she'll stop the story. I'm also like that only. See, I'm… A potato farmer one day wanted to eat mangoes. What did he want to eat? Mangoes. mangoes. So he went looking for a mango tree and he found a mango tree. He found a mango tree. Huh? <laughs> then he saw the mango tree, he got to the right tree and then out of sheer habit, being a potato farmer, he started digging the ground for mangoes. When he did not find any mangoes, he became furious and dug furiously. As he went on, slowly the tree came down upon him. This is the human story, in search of human well-being. We're digging up the whole damn planet. It's not going to happen if I give you all the eleven planets. Hello? You need to turn inward. You need to do something about this one. We are busy fixing the damn world. The world doesn't need fixing because there's only one problem on the planet, human beings. Tell me one more. Hello? Tell me one more problem on the planet. There's only one problem, it's the human being. Why the most intelligent creature on the planet has become a problem? Why the most evolved life on the planet has become a problem? Because if you had half the brain that you have, you would be peaceful. Hello? Yes? So your intelligence has become a problem. About four or four, four and a half years ago, uh, a television anchor, in Hyderabad, reasonably popular anchor, she jumped off the fifth floor window of her apartment and committed suicide, she died. And she left a note, nobody is responsible for my death, my brain is my enemy. How fantastic! To get you here, to this level of cerebral activity, it took millions of years of work. Millions of years of research and development, you can dismiss it off with one word evolution, but actually it's millions of years of research and development and today your brain and your intelligence is a problem. You can call it stress, you can call it anxiety, you can call it depression, you can call it whatever. Essentially, you do not know how to conduct your own intelligence. Hello? Your own intelligence is turned against you. If you do not engineer your interiority the way you want it to be, we have engineered the world the way we want it. If you do not engineer your interiority the way you want it, build what you want, have what you want, have heaps of gold, carry it on your head, you will still be miserable. It's important we understand, especially now, with such a tremendous possibility, as a generation of people, we must understand never before in the history of humanity, human beings have had as many things as you are having, as much comfort, as much convenience, as much capability as we have today, especially the women. You must understand this, never before life has been this good for a woman on this planet, anywhere on this planet. This is the first time and what are you cribbing about? because you are a potato farmer, for well-being you are digging the ground. No, you need to dig inward. As there is a science and technology for external well-being, there is a whole science and technology for inner well-being. If you do not go this way, see it's been handled like this for a long time. People told you, don't worry, God will take care of you. You are not in that intellectual condition to hand over your life to God. Let's be straight about it, yes or no? Yes. 
you are not in that condition. Are you willing to leave your money on the street and say, God will take care of it? Are you in that condition? Leave your children on the street and say, God will take care. Are you capable? No, then don't go on bullshitting yourself and the rest of the world. At least don't do that to your children because you've told these lies for too long. It's time to understand that if you want well-being, you need to conduct this properly. This body, this mind, these emotions, these energies that we call as life, we need to conduct this properly. To conduct anything properly, there is always a science. When we say a science, a systematic approach to make it happen the way it works. When you do something the way it works and it can be repeated for millions of people, that is science. So if you do not have a scientific approach to turn inward and conduct this life the way you want it, well-being is a pipe dream. That's why a lot of people are onto the pipe right now. So this is not a simple issue. For me, this is not a moral issue at all. Right now, in this country, for example, when we were growing up, it was like this in our families, ladies are talking. Some alliances come for the girls and what? No, in their home they drink. Somebody, not the groom, somebody drinks. We can't give our girl to that house. But today if you don't serve drink, nobody will come for your wedding. <laughs> Hello? So in thirty, forty years this has happened and if you think drink is good, your children think drug is good. Hello? Little evolution must happen. Your children, if you started drinking at twenty-five, they must start at fifteen and they are. Now this is not a moral issue for me. The important thing is, already we are in this condition to make food, we need chemicals. If you breathe in Delhi, you make… you may… you bring… Uh, you breathe chemicals. If you drink water, it's full of poison, intentionally added to kill the germs and other things, all right? But we must understand the life on this planet is designed in such a way, what kills a bacteria is also capable of killing you because you and a bacteria are made fundamentally the same way. It's only the question of dosage. A bac bacteria might die with a little bit, you need a little higher one. If you don't understand the chlorine in the water, you drink a bottle of chlorine, you will be dead, all right? So, we are poisoning the water, we are poisoning the air, the soil, everything. As if that's not enough, now if you want to be peaceful, you need chemicals. If you want to be joyful, you need chemicals. If you want to be ecstatic, of course you need it. When this is the case, in another twenty-five, thirty years, we may reach a point where ninety percent of the population will be on chemicals. If this happens, then the generation that comes next, the generation that we produce will be much less than us. If you produce a generation which is less than you, you have committed a crime against humanity. We are very, very close to that. So there is a way that you can change the fundamental chemistry of who you are. When I just got in the elevator, some <laughs> somebody comes and asks me, here he is, how are you doing, Sadhguru? I said, I'm blissed out. How else to be? See, do you understand that your body, this human system or mechanism is the greatest chemical factory on the planet? Most complex, most sophisticated? Now the question is only, are you a great CEO or a lousy CEO? If you are a great CEO, you will produce the chemicals that make you wonderful. If you are a lousy CEO, you will produce something that you don't want. It's as simple as that. Today, we have enough study in the world. For example, uh, you know, the teaching hospital for Harvard Medical School has done research on what we call as inner engineering. In six weeks of practice, your endocannabinoids are up by seventy percent, which is twenty-three percent higher than what happens in sexual orgasm. Simply sitting in one place, you're blown away. This needs to happen only when you are not in search of happiness and well-being in the outside world will you do things consciously, otherwise you are dri driven by your compulsions. In these compulsions, we will do all the things we should not do. This is what we are doing to the world, this is what we are doing to every other creature, this is what we are doing to the entire planet. 
things that we should not do. As human beings, being the most intelligent creatures, we are doing this simply because we are compulsive. This compulsiveness is because you're digging for mangoes in the ground. Thank you very much.